Hello everyone, Rissy Toothpick here, back again with some more Agatha Christie's Hercule Poirot, the first cases, and today we will be interrogating the staff members as they have a connection with the Major's murder. Monsieur Sterling, is there anything you would like to add to your story? I'm not sure what you think I have done, Detective. Let us not string out this charade any longer. The telephone call the Major received. From his associate. I've already told you, Detective. I don't know who it was. Do not worry yourself on such details now. I suppose they were lucky to have called when they did. Otherwise, they may not have gotten through at all with the telephone lines being down as of yesterday. Aye, Detective. Lucky, I guess. Monster Sterling is no fool. I believe he is aware I suspect him of something. Perhaps some careful, worded questions are all that are needed for him to slip up. You were the last to see the Major alive when you brought him the bottle of whiskey in his study, correct? Whiskey? You took a bottle of whiskey to the Major? You spoke with Monsieur Demir en route? Aye, of course. It was a bottle he picked up from his last visit to Scotland. Rather smoky number from the Highlands. He was saving it for a worthy occasion. Drowning his sorrows must have been fitting enough. At first he does not remember a bottle at all, and as if by magic he recalls the exact details. Or was it the one from the West Coast? You'll have to excuse my memory, Detective. It's not what it used to be. Can you explain why a medal belonging to the Major was amongst your belongings? Oh, you found it. Thank you, Detective. I've been looking everywhere for it. If I had lost a war medal, I would not stop until I found it. It's not what you think. I was... Exploiting a dead man's military achievements for your own personal gain? Nothing of the sort. He asked me to clean them up. I must have dropped it into my pocket when I was putting them back. An honest mistake. Never have I heard such a pathetic excuse to explain a stolen item in one's possession. I would expect a better lie from an infant. I cannot claim to be an expert, but I would presume a medal like that would be of quite some value. I wouldn't know. Probably. Your father was in the military for many years. That is what you told me. He was. And your family still keep his medals? They were sold. And why was that, monsieur? Is my family on trial now, detective? Only you, monsieur. And I repeat my question. Because we needed money. Voila. Monster, Monsieur Sterling was well aware of the medal's value when he had found its way into his belongings. You claim the Major asked you to clean his medals. For display purposes? No. He keeps them safe with some of his old military documentation. Is that a typical job for the head butler? He trusts me to do a good job. I told him I used to clean my father's. So he asked me to do the same. And where does he keep these items? In the storage room. I know where everything is, so it's just easier if I fetch them for him as and when he needs them. I do not recall seeing any military memor memorabilia or keepsakes when I was in the storage room. Could there be another storage room he speaks of? Are you happy here at the Vandenbosch house? It's certainly better than my last. You are paid a fitting wage for the work that is asked of you? I'm sure the lady of the house would not want me discussing it. But I... I should not complain. That is not the most convincing answer, monsieur. Between you and I, we all work very hard here. And it would be nice if we were rewarded for it. It seems Monsieur Sterling is trying to convince me, as he has himself, that his light-fingered actions are justifiable due to the petit, petite wage he receives for his honest work. Please don't go anywhere. 
If I require more information, I shall call on you again. Alrighty. And there's another connection here. Madam Pay staff very little. Forgot to took forgot he took whiskey to the major. Archibald hasn't noticed the lack of calls. Let me try this one first. I cannot see the logic in this. Yeah, I already assumed it didn't work. He stole from the major. Okay, so let me see here. The only thing I might see is like staff crewing for the real time of death and he forgot. Order and method. That is the way. No, what could it be? This will not get me any closer. Okay, it's this one and worn out boots. Madam pays the staff very little. I should have known. I should not be surprised by my own skills of deduction. Sometimes it's so obvious that you just like overlook it. I should have known at first glance these belong to a member of the staff, but who? Maybe Elizabeth? Must act on thought. I cannot see the logic in this. Perhaps a second. Who could have took it? Maybe these two are actually connected. The pieces of the puzzle are finally coming together. Alrighty. A staff member dressed in the Major's clothes and took his position out in the snow for the guests to see. Why would they do this? Okay. Let's talk to Ying here. Mademoiselle, I shall keep my questions brief. I don't know what else I can tell you. You have been honest with me so far. All I request is that you continue to do so. Oui, detective. I am already aware of Mademoiselle's involvement with the blackmail, but I'm not sure if she is also connected to the Major's murder. Tell me what happened before you found the Major in his study. It was frantic in the pantry. We were working hard to make sure everything was up to scratch. Go on. Then Liz burst in, asking for Maman Ray's help. Her help with what, exactly? I don't know. She took Liz to one side, and I was needed in the salon. We spoke just after that in the pantry. You did not question what she needed help with? I was too busy. I love Liz, but she sheds a tear at almost everything these days. Although, I have never seen her look so pale. Mademoiselle Elizabeth still looked pale when I saw her earlier. I understand the amount of work that goes into keeping a house of this size running. But madam cannot expect the staff to work if they are ill. Well, she's not sick. Perhaps Mademoiselle Rihanna can clear up the reason for Elizabeth's panic. Merci. I shall return if I have any further questions. Okay, and there's no connections with what that girl said. Let us talk to Rihanna. Mademoiselle, I shall be as quick and precise with my questioning as possible. Okay. What do you need? My condolences on your brother's passing. Merci. He was a good man. Taken too early. Forgive me, mademoiselle, for not extending them earlier. But I was not aware of your relationship. He was my only brother. And he died doing what he believed was right. 
if I ever get my hands on who took him from me. I understand why she was so angry for her brother to be taken from this world at such a young age and in such a violent manner. Violence cannot be met with violence, but I'm not sure Mademoiselle feels the same. Tell me about your brother's involvement in the riots at the factory. You say the riots, but it was the strike he was part of. They started the riots, not the workers. By they, you are referring to the security forces. They were brought in to keep the peace. Security, huh? They were brought in to make an example of them. It was all peaceful until they arrived. Why would they need to make an example? So that the workers would stop rallying. No one is going to go on strike if they think they'll get killed. The security you talk of were armed and ready. The workers were pigs to the slaughter. What chance did they have? It is obvious Mademoiselle is still upset about her brother's death, and rightly so. If the events were as Mademoiselle describes, I cannot comprehend how the security forces were able to get away with such despicable acts of violence. Pardons, pardonnez moi, Mademoiselle. I knew we have spoken on this, but you took ice to the major, correct? Yes. This was before or after Archibald took him a bottle of whiskey. Before? You are sure? It may have been after. The whiskey is kept in the cellar with all the alcohol. It is. Then you must have noticed him going into the cellar and returning with a bottle through the pantry, no? Yes, I suppose I did. It must have been before then. It took only one question for Mademoiselle to doubt her own story. What I still cannot see is why the need for the lies. Tell me about Elizabeth yesterday. What is there to say? Being locked away in the pantry, I don't see her for most of the day. That may be. But she came looking for your help before dinner was served, did she not? She wasn't feeling well, that's all. And she came to you. I told you, we are a family here. The girls come to Mama Reh if they have a problem, and I fix it. When I saw her earlier, I must admit she was not looking herself. Perhaps I should check on her. No, just leave the poor girl. She'll be fine after another bowl of my homemade soup. She just needs her rest. I'm sure Mademoiselle Rihanna is a loving mother figure to the staff while away from their families, but her eagerness to keep me from seeing Mademoiselle Elizabeth again does not sit comfortably. Merci, Mademoiselle. That is all for now. That's because Elizabeth is the weak link here that we could pressure into giving up the true story. All right, so we have another link here. See here, Rihanna unsure about timing. Let's see if these two connect together. Things are beginning to become clearer. How can either of them forget something so important from only the day before? Because it's a lie. Okay. Maybe it's this connection. Things are beginning to become clearer. Both Archibald and Rihanna played the parts very well. That is until they became complacent. Why do the staff feel they need to fabricate stories? Okay. So it will be this one. Staff may be involved in the murder. Is there something I am not seeing? No. Could it be this one? Another success. I never doubted myself. I almost had to relay their stories back to them both. I obviously cannot truth a word they have said. Why are the staff hiding the truth from me? Because they're the killer. 
the pieces of the puzzle are finally coming together. It is a revelation I had not expected. The staff were involved in the murder. While Young Ying is guilty of her own crimes associated with the blackmail, it is Monsieur Sterling and Mademoiselle Rihanna that have been an integral part in covering up and obscuring the truth of how the Major was killed. Yep. I bet you it was Elizabeth that killed him. The staff were already suspicious to begin with, but this confirms their involvement. Are all the staff members involved? Oh no, we have three links here. I am close to revealing the truth about the Major's murder, but I must understand the role that each and every person involved played before the final puzzle is solved. Okay, let's see if these two go to get together. Come, my little gray cells. We mu Maybe these go together. What a revelation! I cannot imagine the pain they have felt losing luck. His memory will live on in their hearts. Let me see here. A staff member impersonated the major. Maybe these two? I must take a different approach if I am to uncover. Oh, let me see here. I must take a different approach if I am to uncover the truth. Staff are involved in the murder. Archibald staged the phone call. This will not get me any closer. Okay, so now it's telling me all the ones that are connected here. So staff are involved in the murder. Elizabeth looked white coming downstairs. Magnifique. Elizabeth looked pale and the other members of staff were busy with their duties. She must have found the body, but did she play a part in the murder? And then... Elizabeth found the body. Rihanna helped her. Some would say a lucky guess. I would say a moment of genius. Although her duties are primarily focused in the kitchen and pantry, I don't recall seeing her. Whoa, this one went one to three. Okay, well, first off, let me connect uh, these. I should not be surprised by my own skills of deduction. I'm confident Ying isn't part of the cover-up that has clearly been a focus for the other staff. Okay, and still two. So this one is connected to two things. Rihanna hasn't was, wasn't seen after Elizabeth found the corpse. I should not be surprised by my own skills of deduction. Impersonating the Major was Rihanna's role in the plan. Why it was necessary, I'm not sure of yet. Why did she feel the need to cover for Elizabeth? And I'm assuming these are connected. Some would say a lucky guess. I would say a moment of genius. Archibald acting skills came into play to cover for a member of the staff, but who? Rihanna, maybe? I must act on thought and fact, not... Let me connect these two. What a revelation! The staged phone call was Archibald's assignment. He went to great lengths to protect Elizabeth, but why did he feel the need to cover for Elizabeth? While Young Ying is guilty of her own crimes associated with the blackmail, it is Monsieur Sterling and Mademoiselle Rihanna that have been an integral part in covering up and obscuring the truth of how the Major was killed. Alrighty, so now we need to talk to them. I now have all the pieces of the puzzle. I must return to my room and place them together until the res result reveals itself. 
It is time for my little gray cells to go to work. I am so close to uncovering the truth. All right, let's figure this out. Okay, so there's one connection somewhere. The only exclamation point is the staff are involved in the murder. Order and method. That is the way. What is the connection here? Well, first off, I think these two have to go together. Magnifique. How could I have allowed this to slip through my grasp? Elizabeth is the murderer. Oh, that was simple. <laughs> I thought it was going to be a little bit more difficult, but Elizabeth did it. I thought it was the head butler, when in fact it was the maid we knew for a long time now. I cannot believe I did not see it, blinded by my own trust. When I look back now, the clues were there, staring me in the face. I spent my time chasing connections between the guests. Their motives and agendas were more than enough to raise suspicion. But while distracted by them, I failed to notice the one absent member of the household. What I still cannot grasp is why. I promised myself that after that fateful day in the capital, I would not let my judgment steer me adrift. But once again, it is I left looking the fool. There is nothing more that can be done tonight. I must at least try to rest my head in preparation for confronting Mademoiselle Elizabeth in the morning. Time to finish it. The truth. Alrighty. What in the world? Has an elephant escaped and made its way to the second floor? It sounds as though it is coming directly from above me. But that is the storage room. Looks like we might find something else. If I had to make a guess, I'm assuming that we're going to find the secret room. So let me run all the way over here. And where is this room that has the door, like, creaked open? Okay, not that one. Over here. Why would Monsieur Sterling be in here clattering around in the dead of night? I already see it. This is where the hidden room is, and I know where it's at. You can see the scratch marks. Archibald is up in the middle of the night making some amount of noise. Must find out the extent of his behavior. I mean, you can already see it right here. Mr. Sterling. Oh, Detective. I was just... Please, I eagerly await to hear what reason you give for being in the storage room at this hour. A butler's job is never... I am no fool, monsieur. You have spun enough stories this weekend. Honestly, detective, you don't trust anyone. And with good reason. My patience has all but run out. What are you doing in here? I've been thinking about my time with the family. I often think on fond memories. But it does not take me to a storage room in the middle of the night. There are many memories held within these walls. I just wanted to see them again. Munster Sterling sounds as though he has plans on leaving the house. It sounds as though you were moving furniture in here. I didn't realize the noise I was making. Obviously. Were you preoccupied looking for another of the Major's medals? Of course not. I already explained. No, monsieur. You attempted to dupe me again into believing one of your stories. Please, detective. I know you know how it ended up in my possession. I was just trying to get some extra money together to send home. I can't lose this job. 
If Lady Van den Bosch found out. Theft of a medal would be the very least of your problems. You have done nothing but deceive and abuse your position in the house. Deceive? I'm sorry that I lied to you about the medal. Even when confronted, Monster Sterling still remains steadfast and refused to acknowledge what he has done. Would you care to explain the fake telephone call? It was purely for my benefit, no? Why would I fake a telephone call? The same reason that Mademoiselle Rayana dressed in the Major's jacket in the snow. To allow not only the guests, but me, to believe the Major was still alive. I didn't kill him, Detective. I know, Monsieur. But I also know that you helped the one that did to cover their tracks. It wasn't like that. We were just trying to help. She had no part in it. Both you and Mademoiselle Rihanna risked your freedom to help Elizabeth. You never let on. How long have you known it was her? Monsieur, I am Detective Hercule Poirot. I only show my hand when I deem it necessary. You will be taking her away then. She will stand trial for what she has done. But you don't know the full story. She is just a servant in this house. If she is arrested, that will be the end for her. If Mademoiselle was only protecting herself, as you both have claimed, she will surely be found innocent. You have still not explained what you were doing in here. The Major's military storage box. The one that stored his medals. Amongst other things, yes. And those other things are? I had to protect her. If you found it when searching the study, you would have carted her off then and there. Whatever it is you have hidden, it will not remain that way for much longer. Monster Sterling is obviously hiding something. I should perhaps conduct my own search for it instead of relying on his cryptic messages. I need a moment. Alright, well I'm going straight... Oh, never mind. I have to go around and about to find it, I guess. Huh. One of the many saint carvings from around the house, abandoned in a box. Why is the saint carving in here? Oh, because we know. Looks like we need to, con to connect it. Things are beginning to become clearer. That one was easy. The detached carving may relate to a door in this room. This would explain Archibald's presence. Secret room, accessible within storage room. Another success. I never doubted myself. Archibald must have hidden items in the secret room. I presume this exists within here somewhere. All right, so now we can inspect the storeroom. Let me get rid of these. Okay, and let me just kind of inspect everything. There's be, there's be nothing here. Nothing there. Just doing this just in case there's like a achievement or something. And we found it. Aha, a hidden room. It seems there are more secrets in this house to discover. Huh. The Major's military service box. It contains later letters and keepsakes. First off, let me make sure there's no connections here. An expensive looking lighter, it looks to have unfortunately been through a war. Oh my little gray cells, I believe we already know something about this mystery. Uh, nope, you're a little cheerily there. But that lighter was used to light his uh, cigar. The last will and testament of the late Viscount, it seems he truly loved Angeline. 
Last Will and Testament Declaration. I declare that I, Viscount Edwin Vandenbosch, am of sound mind. This last will expresses my wishes without undue influence or duress. Article 1. And in the event of my death, I hereby appoint my wife, Cassandra Vandenbosch, as the executor of the Vandenbosch estate, and I leave the remaining wealth held in the Vandenbosch name to my only daughter, Angeline Vandenbosch. Any outstanding debts, expenses of my last illness, funeral expenses, and administration costs are to be paid from the Vandenbosch account at the National Bank of Belgium. To my daughter Angeline, you are the apple of my eye and the brightest star in the sky. Never allow your light to fade for even a moment. It sucks for him. To my wife Cassandra, thank you for the many joyous years. We have laughed, we have loved, and we have brought the most precious of gifts into this world together. I trust that you will protect her and prepare her for a future full of opportunity and hope. Viscount Edwin Vandenbosch. I feel sad for him because, you know, it wasn't his real daughter. And there's the murder weapon. A prestigious looking knife, likely belonging to the Major. Now that should be everything. And there's two connections. Potential murder weapon. The pieces of the puzzle are finally coming together. The murder weapon has been found. Elizabeth must have used this in the study. Talk to Archibald. There's one more here. Let me see here. Rose engraving. Unrecognizable symbol. I should not be surprised by my own skills of deduction. I am surprised I got that one. This letter must belong to the major. The army symbol all but confirms this, but don't I already have this in my possession? Military lighter, the major's lighter. Things are beginning to become clearer. The lighter I found in the military box is certainly the major's, meaning the other one is not. And we just need to talk to the head. Butler here. There is no use lying anymore. When I inspected the garden yesterday, I found a lighter I assumed belonged to the Major. He always had his regiment lighter that he received in the war on his person. And yet... It was not his regiment emblem that was engraved on it. My father's. It must have fallen out of my pocket. You still have it, detective. Monsieur, you have stashed evidence, manipulated a crime scene, obscured my investigation, and yet it is a lighter that you worry about most. If it is my path to end up behind bars for what I have done, so be it. It is Elizabeth that you cannot allow to be locked up without the truth being told. I have heard how you fought for that young maid before Florette, is it? I only ask that you do the same for Elizabeth. Although the cases differ greatly in severity, I can envision the similarities in how Mademoiselle Elizabeth will be treated by those in position of authority or social standing even before she is trialed. It is my oath as an officer of the law to uphold justice and fairness. Mademoiselle must be given the chance to prove her innocent, innocence before the courts as any other suspect. The absent murder weapon. You found it. Even the secret area that has been created here is not concealed enough to stop Detective Hercule Poirot. All right, let's be real here. That secret room, super easy to find. I couldn't just leave it at the scene for you to find. The Major was killed by his own knife. The knife that protected his life during the war would eventually be the one that ended it. It was in his holster when he attacked her. He had hold of her arm. What else was she meant to use to get him off of her? 
I cannot imagine the Major would have given his knife up easily. She must have been in close proximity to reach it. Perhaps he did attack her, as she claims. She didn't plan any of it, Detective. She was only defending herself. That is what Mademoiselle told you? She did, and I believe her. You think you knew the Major, but you had no idea. He was a monster and had more secrets than all of us combined. That may be true, but that does not excuse what she has done. Put yourself in her shoes for a minute. If a man like that had attacked me the way he did Lizzie, I would have done a lot worse to him. Mademoiselle Elizabeth has told Monster Sterling a version of the events that suggests she was attacked by the Major. I struggle to believe that she would make such a story up, but then I also did not believe she could do such a thing as commit murder. I need a moment. Alrighty, but we're gonna stop there today. In the next one, we will connect the dots and possibly go in front of everyone and disclose the information of the murderer.